Hey everyone, my name is Sudad and I'm a medical intern here in India. Currently, I've given my USMLE Step 1 exam and I've passed it. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to prepare for the next Step 1 exam uh, or how to study for the next Step 1 exam, uh, especially for the final year students who have their exam in probably five months from now. And in previous videos, I've already discussed about uh, the next uh, notification and the gadget that they had released uh, which talks about all the uh, topics that are included in the next step 1 exam and also the distribution of uh, the questions and uh, how, what kind of questions are going to be asked in next and so yeah this is the same exact thing that is present in the next notification which is that medicine, surgery, OBGY will have uh, 120 questions and uh, pediatrics, CNT, ophthal will have 60 questions each. So that makes uh, medicine, surgery, and OBGY one of the super important topics. And uh, I would suggest you do uh, the same resources that you have been using, like uh, Marrow, Dams, or Prep Ladder, or whatever that you guys are using, and focus more on the INICET questions related to it. And uh, I have the marrow notes because I used to do marrow from it and I can see that it's very extensive already so I don't think you're missing out on any of the clinical aspect of the theory part and I feel having uh, done these uh, modules from marrow uh, they are very good and they explain a lot of things that are needed for that is needed for the exam and uh, also something that I would recommend you guys do is uh, do medicine along with uh, physiology and pathology and do surgery along with uh, anatomy, biochemistry and pathology and uh, OBGY you should do it separately and the thing is that uh, 120 questions for OBGY is a little bit too much but uh, I think you can definitely manage it with the marrow notes that are present and uh, do from those. Uh, Dr. Sakshi Arora from Marrow uh, is definitely an amazing professor and uh, I still remember a lot of things that I did back in my 2020-2021 uh, uh, year. Uh, the next important uh, subjects are ENT Ophthal and Pediatrics definitely. They have 60 questions each so uh, keep on doing the same things like Marrow, Dams or Prep Ladder. Plus you should also read your third year textbooks in uh, the third year and uh, if you since you guys are already in your final year you should solve more INICT questions and more clinical knowledge style questions 60 questions each from these uh, short subjects is a little bit too much but uh, I think definitely there will be some questions that are repeated and uh, in the same exam and just trying to uh, ask the same question from a different point of view or tackling something that is uh, relatively similar. And now moving on to the uh, less important topics like uh, anatomy, embryology, like the first and second year topics which have only 10% weighted weightage according to the notification. And I would suggest you do uh, all of these topics from the first aid for the USMLE step 1. Uh, this is a picture of my first aid for the USMLE step 1. This is the book right here that I used for my USMLE Step 1 exam and it contains all of these topics like uh, anatomy, embryology, physiology, biochemistry, microbiology, pathology, pharmacology, uh, FMT is not included in it but uh, PSM, orthopedics and psychiatry is included in it and I'll show you guys with examples on uh, each topics and how you can study for it. For example, anatomy and embryology, uh, before each uh, clinical section like uh, the cardiology or uh, GI system, they have the anatomy and embryology relevant for that system and they only give the most relevant things that are important. You can add information that has been asked already in the previous year INICT questions and uh, just note down some topics. Like, um, I have noted down a lot of things from uh, the USMLE Step 1 point of view, but you can add it from the INICD point of view. Uh, this will be a fast way and easy way to 
uh, revise anatomy and embryology and move on to the next part. And this is an example of uh, embryology. They've given a lot of uh, illustrative diagrams with labels and everything. They also give the most important points on the right hand side of the uh, page. So you can just uh, read those like uh, patent for aminoil can cause a paradoxical emboli uh, with patients who have an ESD. So what you should do is take the most important points from here and apply it to the pathology and the congenital defects that are given in the pathology section. Next is physiology. This is again from the cardiology section. Uh, it also gives the pathology with it like the uh, different types of murmurs and uh, some presentations are also given uh, like uh, like aortic stenosis is uh, presented with uh, syncope, angina, dyspnea on exertion and there is calcification in older patients. So this is something that will help you remember uh, such topics in a clinical point of way. And this is just one page from the physiology section. There is a lot of information that is given in this section and you can tie, in, tie it in with the pathology section and everything would feel like a good flow. This would again be an easy and a fast way to prepare for your next exam because uh, again physiology is included in the 10% weightage and move on to biochemistry. The first side has the, all the biochemistry major cycles and many of them are clubbed together so that you know which uh, cycle enters which stage and uh, I didn't annotate much because it already looks like there's a lot of things that is written here and any annotation on this would just ruin the cycles and it's easier to recall the steps in the cycle and where each uh, substrate jumps in and connects with the whole cycle. You can check out the vitamin section as well because th those are super important nowadays and a lot of questions have been uh, asked in the NEET last year. Yes, and it also has uh, excellent tie-ins with pathology and uh, symptomatology uh, from the clinical point of view. Next, we move on to microbiome and immunology. Uh, you can see that uh, how they've given each uh, bacteria. Uh, I've added the treatment part and I've highlighted some of the important things that are mentioned here. Like the protein A virulence factor of the Staphylococcus aureus uh, binds to the FC region of IgG. And uh, yeah, so th I think this is an easy way to revise all the uh, bacteria and the different microbes that are present. Uh, many tables are present, so it's much easier to look at it. Uh, flow charts for the gram positive, gram negative bacteria and identification of which bacteria is, the, is being asked is given in this book. And also the Immuno part has uh, all the immunodeficiency disorders, hypersensitivity reactions, transplant rejections. All of them have been given in a tabular format. If you can see, like uh, all the uh, B cell disorders are given together, together, T cell disorders are given together, mixed disorders are given together, phagocyte dysfunction is given separately, and yeah, so all the right hand side part has the important things that are. Uh, the high yield part. Next is uh, pathology. Everything is given system wise after each section. Like each section mentions the anatomy embryology part first, then the physiology part, and then the pathology part. So if you read it in a system wise manner, uh, you'll understand uh, the subject much better. It's an amazing way to revise uh, pathology, it makes everything uh, fall in place and uh, not just make you wonder which part is where and uh, why does why do you have to study that. A uh, lot of medicine uh, times are present and uh, it will help you with the clinical questions and it's also quick for revision uh, and it just integrates all the subjects that are there in first and second year very well. Uh, the next is pharmacology. Uh, it's Again, it's given after pathology and this is probably the last section in each uh, system wise manner. It is given nicely along with tables and mechanism of action of each drugs and you can see some of the uh, anti-epileptic drugs that are given here. It has all the mechanisms and the uses 
uh, which type of seizure can be used in and uh, yeah some mnemonics are present of course like some drugs will be different like uh, the ones that are used in the US and the ones that are used in India do pharmac well a lot of medicine treatment uh, will be dependent on it and a lot of medicine topics will become easier FMD uh, you can use your regular resource like marrow, prep dams, whatever you've been using and solve questions that's all and PSM uh, is mentioned in the first aid book and a lot of basic things like the study design, study tools, applications everything is given in uh, short and you can just highlight some of the important mnemonics for remembering everything and they've all also given some graphs with which you can uh, identify the sensitivity, specificity and uh, everything it's uh, easy and a fast way to revise PSM and uh, you can apply these uh, for the questions that they ask uh, next is orthopedics uh, a lot of general topics uh, are present in orthopedics plus uh, some of the core ortho topics like uh, metacarpal fracture, uh, femur neck of fracture a lot of things are given uh, in this book and you can just revise it and uh, I think that will be enough for your uh, medicine tie-ins and uh, surgery tie-ins as you can see in this uh, picture that they've given carpal tunnel syndrome and uh, I've added a lot of things from uh, the uh, on the first aid from different question resources and yeah so it will cover most of your pathology as well uh, there are a lot of uh, tables like the uh, for the major disorders like osteoporosis, osteopetrosis, uh, Paget's disease, everything is given uh, with your arrows like in which disorder calcium is increased, phosphate is decreased alkaline phosphatase is increased or decreased and the parathyroid hormone uh, they've also given uh, bone tumors in short and the mnemonic that they've given here is that uh, benign bone tumors start with O and they are most common in boys like the osteochondroma, osteoma, osteoid osteoma and osteobastoma so yeah this will be very easy to revise and just uh, go through it quickly and the last is uh, psychiatry uh, most of the psychiatric topics are covered and they've given in a lot of detail as well uh, important diagnostic points for each uh, psychiatric disorder and how to differentiate between uh, the similar uh, disorders like uh, schizophrenia, schizophreniform, schizoaffective, schizotypal all of them have been given and you can revise it before the exam and you will be able to do most of those questions correctly like here they've given uh, schizophrenia and they've given uh, schizophrenia from inside it because most of the symptoms are similar only that the uh, onset of symptoms is between one to six months so yeah I think this is uh, my two cents on how to prepare for the next step one exam and uh, I've covered the 10% <clears throat> part of the first and second year and also the 10% PSM part the rest of it has to be done from your regular resources like marrow dams or prep ladder that you've been using and solve more and more INICT questions and clinical knowledge uh, don't worry much about the exam right now we'll get to know more about how the questions are being asked and what type of questions are being asked after the mock exam so till then just focus on studying and uh, keep doing your best and that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one